بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Continuing on our treaties, Aqidat Wasatiya, Shaykh al Islam said, after mentioning those divine, the important principles related to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes, Shaykh al Islam said, وَقَدْ دَخَلَ فِي هَذِهِ الْجُمْنَ مَا وَصَفَ اللَّهُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ فِي سُورَةُ الْإِخْلَاسَ الَّتِي تَعَدَّ ثُلُفُ الْقُرْآنِ حَيْثَ يُقُولُ so Shaykh al-Islam said and that Surah Al-Ikhlas fits into those verses which entail both negating and aff affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine na names and attributes and that it is considered a third of the Qur'an because of what it contains in Tawheed and its greatness as an ayat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the shaykh said in the as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem qul huwa allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders and says, say, said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, say, Allah is one. He is a samad. You know, he is, uh, every creature is dependent upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He is not begotten, nor was he begotten. And there is none comparable or like unto him. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines both nafi with ithbat as we mentioned that qaida. Shaykh al-Islam was illustrating, used this ayat as evidence to illustrate that qaida, which is a, a verse that we're all bi'idnillah very familiar with in the Quran. A very short verse but a very powerful verse which entails a third of the Quran and is a verse which affirms tawheed and ikhlas lillah, that's why it's called surah al-ikhlas, the sincerity. It affirms that tawheed, that worship is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those divine names and attributes are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we should ascribe no partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kul hu Allahu ahad. He affirmed for himself that he is Allah, the one. Allah samad, the one who all creatures are dependent upon. Lem yulid wa lem yulad. There's the nafi. There's the negation. So the ayat contains both affirmation, affirming those divine attributes about who Allah is, Subhanahu wa Taala, and then, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala negates. He negates lem yulid wa lem yulad. He said there is. He has. Uh, he was not begotten, nor was he begotten. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala there, he negates the characteristics of uh, of being begot of having been born to a mother and a father and the other characteristics which is also a human characteristic of being of of uh, having children so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not born nor does he have children subhanahu wa ta'ala he's free from that he's free from those descriptions however there are those groups the Christians who affirm and believe the exact opposite of what Allah negated for himself that he has a son or that he has partners uh, in his worship they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit this is what the Catholics claim in some of the Christian sects or that Allah is the Father or Allah is the Son yeah, various, various uh, deviations going against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed for himself and negated for himself in the Quran. So this ayat, as we mentioned, it contains both an affirmation, affirmation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tawheed, affirmation of his divine names and attributes.
and it negates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son or a daughter or that he was begot, that he was born or that he gave birth, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also it negates the belief, aqidah, and the creed, and the minhaj of the mutashabiha, of ahl tashbih those people who make a resemblance between Allah and His creation. Those people who believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands like they have hands. Or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has eyes like they have eyes or a face like they have a face. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from that. As, he, as we mentioned countless times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem لَيْسَ كَمِتْلِهِ شَيْنْ فَهُوَ سَمِيعُونَ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُونَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is nothing comparable to him and he is the all hearing the all seeing so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again there's nafi and there's ithbat there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that there's anything like him anything that resembles him and then he affirms for himself his divine names and attributes like being the all-seeing and the all-hearing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. He's the only one who possesses those divine names and attributes that we should call upon Him and worship Him by, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم